Welcome to the Street Park Connecting with Tommy. This video is on your Monday Night Raw results and Superstar spoilers. I did not get the spoilers, but uh, it wasn't posted anywhere. All I know is who, who else on the world. Uh, Dark Mates uh, main event uh, from Raw was uh, well, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and Seth Rollins in six man tag action. And there were no results on that as well. Happy birthday goes to Alicia Fox, she's turned 28 years old. She was born June 30th, 1986. Been nice to see her use on the meaningful manner over the last couple of months on uh, WCB. Happy birthday also hits regular Lewis, aka Robert Frederick, real name. Born June 30th, 1891. Died August 8th, 1966, at the age of 75. Former performer Marina D. turned 29 on Saturday. She was born June 28th, 1986. She was a member of uh, CM Punk's Straight Edge Society before she was released by the company in 2010. Also, former WWE wrestler John Heidenreich turned 42 on Saturday. He was born in 1972. I think uh, many, many of you everyone remember him as Titan, remember Heidenreich for the best of his Titan rape segment, where he humped Michael Cole in the backstage. Well, wrestling legend Terry Funk, 270 years old. He was born June 30th, 1944. Funk continues to make occasional appearances. Funk and his brother, Dory Jr. You can go to dory-funk.com on that. Uh, to see a, a Bang TV, uh, the, the wrestling promotion there. As they were inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2009 by Dusty Rose. WWE star Cody Rose also turned 29. He was born June 30th, 1985. Cody is uh, currently working at Stardust, if you didn't know. Along with his brother, Justin, who plays the Gold Goldust character, of course. They are the sons of the Hall of Famer, Dusty Rhodes. Cody has been wrestling in the WWE since 2006. John Ziggler tweeted the following after the Money in the Bank match at last night at the pay per view. Hell of a fight, boys! Hashtag Money in the Bank. At WWE Universe, my record does not deserve your support. But damn it, don't you dare chase. Hashtag DFNZ. Uh, WWE's Dr. Chris Amen posted the following on Randy Orton. Condition after closing the room that he suffered at the Money in the Bank pay per view. Uh, there were two reports one said he had 11, and one said he had 12 stickers. Uh, they had an incident during the WWE World Championship ladder match where Randy was struck in the head. With a ladder, which caused a laceration to the top of his hip, scalp. I evaluated uh, him immediately after the event. He did not show any signs of concussion, but uh, we did. And what we did at ringside was to stop the bleeding with a mixture of Vaseline and epinephrine, which is uh, known as adrenaline. Uh, by putting that in, in the wound and applying direct pressure, uh, we were able to get the bleeding to stop so he could finish the match. Immediately after the match, we brought back into the training room where thoroughly cleaned the wound and put 11 staples in his head. So uh, we're going to monitor him for any signs of new neurological changes. We'll follow him up for another report on from Raw. And that's what I'm doing now. This report says he had 12 stitches in the wound. Uh, wound. And uh, way back saying that Orton have injured an, an arm as well. But that hasn't been confirmed. <clears throat> the uh, Big Show returns to TV very soon after he uh, filmed WWE Studios' movie called Vendetta. Where we will see him feud with Rusev when he does return. Japanese star Kenta will sign a WWE contract on July 12th. Event in Osaka, Japan, according to Tokyo Sports. Kenta signing has been rumored for months and is finally going to be, become official. Thanks to that net reader, Ernesto Cruz, and other readers passing along the story. Also, Hulk Hogan will be in the ring to present the in ring signing. Uh, NXT star Scott Dawson also turned 30 years old. Uh, Vince McMahon tweeted the following about Connor the Crusher mechanic. And I'll put, post a, a link there for that. He says, uh, Connor McKellick lived every, for every moment and inspired Connor's cure to help find a cure for pe pediatric vein cancer. Give to children.org. 
Hashtag Honda's Care. Okay, the United States Champion Sheamus to celebrate five years with the company from uh, uh, today on Monday. Uh, he tweeted the uh, fifth anniversary of my at WWE today. It's been a wild hashtag fella. Wild ride. Uh, expected cake on hashtag Raw tonight. New WWE World Heavyweight Champion John Cena currently scheduled for was not scheduled for uh, SmackDown taping. But we don't know if uh, we're backstage. <clears throat> At the advertised Pre, uh, prior WWE champion to appear on Raw. But <clears throat> well, there are rumors that Miz and Ric Flair were backstage to uh, the to WWE TV this week. Now that Money in the Bank is over, as Chris Jericho's return is also and is not a short one this time, well, according to sources, that Jericho is currently figuring into creative plans at least through September 21st on the Champions Pay Per View. Jericho tried to fool the fans, the fool fans on social media by posting photos indicating that he was with his family at, at his home. <clears throat> Renee Young spoke to Viva Champion AJ Lee on tonight's Raw backstage. So there's your, there's your three previous champions that were on Raw. As she's on uh, a backstage pass post show, she said this past year has given her some of the worst and some of the best moments of her life, and now she's reunited, reunited with her with her baby, the Diva Champion. Uh, as she said, she went out to congratulate Paige, just like Paige said that uh, she was going to AJ three months ago. AJ said she just happened to leave with what's rightfully her, hers. <clears throat> On tonight's uh, post show, Booker T mentioned the backstage fight between Chris Jericho and Bull. Bill Goldberg happened years ago. I didn't go into detail. AJ, made, AJ Lee did make her uh, return to WWE TV from Raw and defeated Paige to become the new Diva Champion. This is her second reign with the title. And it kills all rumors that AJ was pregnant. It was noted on the pre show that the panels will no longer be filming from the arenas as they will be fil filmed at the studios in Stanford, Connecticut. Apparently, this is another cost cutting measure. Tonight's panel was hosted by Byron Saxon, but he and Alex Riley were no special guests. Besides Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt, the great Kali also returned on Raw. I forgot about him, that's four people who returned. They squashed Damian Sando, who was dressed as this one man. <coughs> Dolph Ziggler versus Cesaro had been announced for WWE main event on the network. Speaking of Dolph, he and Summer have a new on screen relationship following tonight's Raw. WWE also announced the following. WWE.com confirmed that Cesaro suffered an eye injury during his match with Kofi Kingston on Raw. And thanks to uh, what uh, the physician, Dr. Chris Heyman, described as a poke from Kingston's finger that rendered the eye red and swollen. We did some uh, specialized testing. A staining in the eye, which uh, showed he did have a scratch on the eye, right, on the right side of the eye, which was called the sclera and not on the cornea. Which is the clear part of the eye, as uh, said Eamon. Uh, we are going to keep his eye patched for the next 24 to 48 hours, use some artificial tears, and reevaluate him prior to his match against Dolph Ziggler on the main event. On Tuesday night taping. As WWE announced on tonight's Raw, the Intercontinental Champion, Wade Badu Barrett, has, been, has a separated shoulder and will be out for several months. The injury came with Jack Swagger throwing him into the barrier at last week's. To last week's SmackDown tapings and the Continental title is now vacant. As Ringside News is describing, vacant has another championship now. And the vacant championship will be determined in a battle royal at the Battleground pay per view to determine a new champion. Outdoor Channel has a new article on uh, interview with Charles Michael. The Midland River Adventures and plans for the new season to begin this week. Sean is in the studio recording interviews for upcoming episodes today. He and producer Keith Mark will be going to Bermuda to film with JBL and Michael Cole this week, featuring to, uh, for a future episode. The four will compete in a Blue Marlin Cup tournament and will be fishing from the 54-foot Paradise One vessel 
manned by Alan and, and Delvin and Bean. Michaels and Mark are hoping to help the boat land the biggest blue marlin in the one day tournament that will bring prize money upwards of almost a half a million dollars. Mark also talked about how Sean faced a lot of crit criticism from hunters when he began publicly and wild did a sport. They said that Sean and his family really lived the outdoors life. As Mark said, he lives on a ranch in Texas. He does the ranch work himself. His wife homeschools the children. They eat uh, what they kill and they harvest what what uh, what they don't eat. And they donate it to a program like Hunters for the Hungry. Matches for that were taped for Superstars. There's no, no results as of yet. Titus O'Neill vs. Big E. Alberto Del Rio vs. Our Truth. And tonight's little pre show kicks off with some fans fouling into the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Since we're not filming in the arena, you won't get any spoilers anymore uh, from the pre show on the network. Byron Saxon is hosting the panel. He's joined by Booker T and Alex Riley. They are actually filming from the WBC though in Connecticut, which Riley. This is their new home. They talk about tonight's show and the mystery. Former WWE champion that is returning. <clears throat> Saxon shows us footage from Money in the Bank and talks about John Cena winning the title. We'll go back to the panel with footage from the Money in the Bank ladder match, including Dean Ambrose beating up Seth Rollins with a chair. We see Rollins uh, take, talking to Tom Phillips after the pay-per-view about getting the job done. Wiley talks about Rollins needing the authority to get the win. And then we go to network promos and get a look at the Usos defeating Luke Harper and Eric Lowen at Money in the Bank. Wiley and uh, Booker predict many title raids to come for the Usos. They also agree that Lowen and Harper have a bright future. We go back to the arena with Renee Young. This with the Usos. Even the Usos gets emotional talking about their wins from last night in the pay-per-view. Jay revealed that they're teaming with Sheamus tonight. We go to more panel and more network commercials. Saxon shows us footage from the Daniel Bryan and Bo Dallas segment last night. And we get more talk from the panel, and that's it for the pre-show. Well, other than uh, there was, uh, was uh, news during the pay-per-view, it was announced that uh, there will be a special event Friday night for the rebroadcast of this, uh, from the pay per view. Due to network technical difficulties, somehow they're going to redo it. Unknown if it's on TV or on the line, on the network because of the issues that they were having. But we'll find out on Friday. If it's posted anywhere. Okay. Well, I'll open with a video package with a highlight from last night. Somebody in the bank pay per view. We go to ring out some. Triple H with Stephanie and Michael Cole welcomes us. They're joined by JBL and Jerry Lawler, of course, and all smiles as they all take the mic with some booze. Stephanie calls it an amazing homecoming. She says that she was born in the city of Hartford and gets a pop. She says that she knows how they feel. All feel privileged, that is. They see a punk champ start up. Stephanie talks about Daniel Bryan's recovery, taking longer than expected. She talks about Seth Rollins making history last night. Triple H calls Rollins the future WWE. He then talks about John Cena winning the world title. Triple H says he and Stephanie always known Cena as an A-plus player. Triple H calls Cena out to the ring with mixed reactions. Cena has both belts draped around his neck. Stephanie goes to speak about uh, speak, but Cena cuts her off. Cena brings up Daniel Bryan, saying that he'll be back better than ever. Cena says the authority won't give him a title shot, but Cena will. Cena starts to get yes, more guys will chant and says that he hopes to see Brian soon. Stephanie reveals that Cena is on the new WWE 2K15 cover to commemorate his 15th title reign. He thanks them and says it's cool, but not needed. He thinks they're up to something and says that they are being too nice, too quick. Triple H and Cena have words. Triple H mocks the rapper, Cena, and then uh, how he talks. Triple H announces Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Kane versus Randy Orton in a fatal four way match at Battleground. It will be Reigns and Cena versus Kane and Orton for later in the evening. Uh, Cena leaves and out comes Seth Rollins as he's on the rampway as Triple H introduces him and says there's a plan B if Cena wins at Battleground somehow as we go to the first commercial. 
first match against Seth Rollins was Rob Van Dam. Seth waits in the ring as Rob Van Dam makes his way out. Then they go at and melt the ball and nail on the shoulder. A big ECW start, chance start. RBD then sends Wallace to the floor. Wallace comes back in and as they go at it. Wallace tries for a submission, but RBD kicks him off. Wallace goes back to the floor for a breather. Wallace comes back in and they trade kicks. RBD nailed it big in security and then RBD forearm in the corner. And RBD shoulder thrust to the back. RBD nails a spin kick in the corner and standing moves up for two. RBD gets more offense in the corner. And Rollins catches RBD, but RBD turns it into an abdominal stretch. RBD turns it into another two count and then a leg hold. Rollins turns around and sends RBD to the floor as we go to another commercial break. Back from that break, and Rollins has RBD down on the mat. RBD turns around into a kick to the face and strikes. Rollins with a leg takedown into a half crab in the middle of the ring. RBD take, makes it to the bottom rope, but Rollins pulls him back. RBD kicks Rollins away. Rollins catches a kick and ducks a into Gary, but rolls him up for a two count. RBD close that with a close iron. A big shot to the jaw. RBD nails one the Thunder for a two count. RBD with a backbreaker. RBD nails a split leg of moonsault for a two count. And then Rollins turns it around and takes RBD's leg out. Dragon whip style. RBD blocks another power bomb, but Rollins beats him down. RBD took and turns another power bomb attempt into a hole from Rollins into a turnbuckle. And RBD goes for the five star frog splash, but Rollins uh, runs out of the ring. RBD waits for him. It turns right around into a crossbody instead. And Rollins did. Uh, RBD brought him back and brought him by, back in the ring, and but Rollins grabbed the grabbed his leg again. The fan chance this is awesome. As Rollins uh, whips the leg again, then RBD goes out hard, and Rollins uh, <coughs> nails the current curve stop finisher for the win. After the match, <coughs> Rollins goes to pose with his briefcase as we go to replays. Renee Young goes in, into the interview, Rollins in the ring, but he cuts her off. Womanizing and everything, calls her twits and everything. He wants uh, to introduce it. Or to introduce him as Mr. Money in the Bank. Rollins says it's not arrogance if you, you back it up. He says everyone is just a uh, bit bitter. And he was right and we were wrong. Rollins says this is a golden ticket to the WWE World Heavyweight title. As Dean Ambrose appears on the big screen and Ambrose says, from one to come back to another, this isn't over. Ambrose says Rollins didn't win this last win last night. His daddy Triple H had to bail him out and send Uncle Kane out. Ambrose says every time Rollins thinks about casting in, he's going to be there. Ambrose says that the briefcase doesn't have a contract inside. It's filled with NXT, uh, it's filled with TNT, and will explode every time Rollins tries to cast it in. And Ambrose tells Rollins to believe that. Still to come segment, Sheamus and the Usos versus the Wyatt family. Also, Cena and Reigns versus Kane and Orton. For your main, uh, main event. Let's go to commercial. Back from the break, out comes Lana with Rusev. Lana says Rusev's last opponent was a failure, but that's okay because America is used to failure. Fans move her and start a USA chant. Lana mocks them, tells them to shut, them, shut up. She goes on and gets more booze by, by showing Vladimir Putin on the big screen. She says no one can stop the onslaught of Russia and the onslaught of Rusev. You know, she asks who will be America's next failure to compete against Rusev. Rusev gets some words and gets the what treatment. A big USA champ starts up. Swagger's music hits. And he's out to face, to a face pop. As he comes in with Zeb Coulter to a pop as well. Fans chant USA as they march to the ring. Zeb says he's tired of Lana coming out here week after week. Slamming America. He tells her to shut the hell up. Jericho style and he says uh, he's allowed to do that because of something that we call freedom of speech. Zeb knocks uh, Russia. She says Atlanta had something that caught her their attention when she said that nothing can stop that Rusev crush. Zeb thinks real America can stop it. He thinks Jack Swagger can stop it. He tells Atlanta and Rusev to listen to the sound of a real America crashing on their heads. Zeb cuts the, uh, cut 
to get the crowd to do the We the People and the entire arena for this We the People chant, and Yusef holds up. As Swagger gets two arm drag, saying Yusef had a ring. They're trying to hold him back, but uh, he's, go as he's going nuts. Swagger is also ready to fight, and fans are well into it. And Swagger's music hits. As we go to commercial with Rusev throwing a fit. The Rusev and Seamus versus the Wyatt family was up next. Back with a commercial break. Champions are out first. And the United States Champion Seamus is also out with him. Following on them. Uh, Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper are out next as the arena light lights up with cell phones. They do their usual pitch. Right here. It, uh, the Usos and Seamus clear the ring early as we go to commercial. Not long. Maybe a minute, minute and a half into the match. Back from the break, Rowan has Jimmy down in the ring. Uso fights back. But Rowan slams him down with, uh, by his hair. Rowan uh, gets a big, big right hand uh, in the right to the face. Ray tags in and does a double team on him. Ray stops and tags Luke into the match for some more double teaming. Harper runs in to an elbow with a big kick. Uso gets to the top for the corkscrew takedown. Rowan and Seamus both tag in. Seamus unloads and decks Harper off the apron. Seamus with a high knee on Rowan. Seamus tosses Rowan to the apron and nails the forearms to the chest. As he's going past the 10 count, gets to like 11, 12 before he pulled off the apron. Harper pulls Rowan to safety, like I said. Seamus uh, ends up diving out and taking them out. He brings Rowan back in and ducks the clothesline. Seamus lands Rowan. Break is on the apron and ducks Seamus. Rowan nails Seamus from behind and sends him out to the floor. Harper tags in and runs over Seamus with the boot, he boot to the jaw on the floor. Kind of like bro kicks out. Wyatt tags in and splashes Seamus for a two count. The Wyatt's keep control of Seamus. Bray ends up knocking Seamus. Off the apron with a big right hand, and the crowd sings. So we got the whole world in with him. Harper tags in and works Seamus over on the top of the announcement table. Seamus bikes back, but Harper rams him into the, into the apron and kicks him. Harper brings him back, and the fans start a JBL chant. Seamus struggles, but finally tags in and unloads on Harper. Harper knocks one of the Usos off the apron, but turns around and there's a backbreaker from Seamus. Jay Uso finally tags in and unloads on Harper, sending him to the floor and leaves out on and takes him down. They come back in and uh, nails a big super kick for a two count as Rowan makes the save. Seamus sends Rowan out with a bow kick. And Uso leaps out on the Rowan on the floor. Wyatt slams Seamus. Bray ducks the Uso kick and escapes to the floor. Harper floors Uso with a huge close ad for the win. And the wise win. Tom Phillips backstage with Nikki Bella. He asked, he asked about Brie Bella being escorted out of the arena from the pay-per-view. Nikki said that honestly she didn't think it was a mistake to invite her. Stephanie McMahon appeared and said that uh, the Bella Twins have a match against Sam and Naomi. But Stephanie remembers. Free of Ben and Nikki, so she will have to wrestle in a handicap match now. Then we see a limousine arriving. It's the returning former WWE champion, but we got a commercial instead. Back from the break, and out comes Bo Dallas. He asks us for 60 seconds of silence for two superstars who can't compete right now. Bad News Barrett and Daniel Bryant. Bo drops one to one knee for a moment of silence, and it goes past for 60 seconds. Bo says he was the voice of inspiration for Bryant at Money in the Bank. And was also the bigger man. Bo shows us a replay from the pre-show segment from the pay-per-view. Pre-show. We come back and to the stage. Bo tells us to don't stop Bo leaving. And that's it. Nikki Bella's music hits. Almost cuts them off. As he uh, comes out. For the handicap match. Nikki Bella versus Cameron and Naomi. Nikki makes her way to the ring. Out come the Funkadackles. Uh, Cam Cameron works over Nikki. The slams her by her hair a few times. Cameron with a two count. Nikki fought back, but uh, got whipped in the corner. Cameron, uh, Cameron ran into, into a big elbow. Nikki with a jawbreaker and a two count. Nikki with a, uh, another takedown. 
He goes for, he goes for the legs, but Cameron kicks her away. Naomi tags herself in. And next, Nikki with a forearm. Nikki goes up top and hits a crossbody next. Naomi drops Nikki for the easy win. After the match, Cameron comes in and is upset about not getting the pin herself. They have words that shove each other. The referee gets in between them and breaks it up. Cameron leaves and walks away by herself. And some fans boo. Still to come segment and they update on Daniel's Barrett back to commercial. Back from the break, we see some of the uh, CT Special Olympics athletes sitting at ringside showing off their medals. And we see Jack Swagger's attack on Daniel's Barrett from last week. They announced it. He will be out of action for several months and is stripped of the, t the title. And now the new champion is vacant. Now there will be a battle royal at Battleground to crown the new champion. Cesaro vs. Kingston was up next. Paul Heyman came out and said it's good news that the end of the title is now vacant because, or, or before introducing Cesaro, Kobe Kingston was out and he's also in the battle royal. Lots of back and forth to start the match. Kobe blocks a hip toss and sends Cesaro out to the floor. Kobe leaps over the top and nails Cesaro and as Heyman is looking on. Kobe brought it back in for a pen attempt. As Kobe springboards in, but Cesaro caught him with a nice backbreaker. Cesaro took control and worked Kobe out over in the corner. Cesaro with a headlock. Cesaro with more offense and another two count. Cesaro stomped on Kobe's chest and kicked him around. More back and forth. As Kobe get, get, got a close roll up. Cesaro with a nail the big shot in the corner. Fan standing for CM Punk. As Kobe rolls out to the floor in pain as we go to commercial, as we come back from the commercial, the match is already over, and Kobe won. Well, Paul Thaw said the ending can be exclusively on the WWE app. We come in on the post-match between a post-match post post -match beatdown with Cesaro, sending Kobe to the floor and nailed the huge uppercut. Cesaro throws Kobe into the steel steps and over to the mouse the table. And Almost you know, lands on and on Cole Saw as he disappeared after that segment. <coughs> he uh, tossed Kofi back over the table, lifted him in air, ran and, and tossed Kofi over the fan barrier, and Kofi flies several feet about to, uh, to the other barrier that's going around the bowl in the arena. Apparently, Cole got hurt, and uh, that was the end of that. His, his uh, for that match. Cesaro continued his assault on Kofi and ran them in, into the ring post several times. Cesaro hit a massive close eye as the referee's coming back. Back to him from the back. We see the end of the match when Kofi got a roll up for the win. Out of nowhere, it's all hooked out after that and destroyed Kofi. Then we see backstage a uh, segment with Santi Morella talking to his Cobra sitting in the lounge. Uh, it's kind of like a beach, a beach chair. And they're talking to a cobra and about talking about a party and nobody showing up to the summer party. Well, Adam Rose uh, appears and pours some twisted tea. It's Santino's cup. And Rose buds appear also with him. And they celebrate. And now Santino has a party. They come back and Cole uh, appears to be fine, but he's selling whatever it was. He says he's never seen it all like that. When we see Paul Cobra's congratulatory tweet to John Cena. Another come segment. Cena and Reigns versus Orton and Kane. Who's going to commercial? Back from the break. Vince, Vince McMahon's music hits, and we all know that it's uh, Vince McMahon's on supposed to be on WWE TV because he's not supposed to have a character. Well, that's none other than Damien McMahon now. As is in uh, Vince McMahon attire and doing the whole gimmick. Uh, Damien comes out and he's dressed up as Vince McMahon. Sandow welcomes us to the wall, just like Vince McMahon would. Sandow does a great promo and says he's built a sports entertainment because he sees talent like Hulk Hogan, Triple H, Steve Austin, and a man who is the most talented to ever step in the front of the ring, a man who everyone is too ignorant to appreciate, Damian Sandow. He is himself up into the battleground battle royal. If anyone has a problem with that, they're tired, as he says. Uh, as that. Announce what was made. Well, Stephanie appears on the big screen and asks Sandow who the hell he thinks he is. She does that and goes off of Sandow and says, Vince built this business by toppling giants. So tonight, 
Sandow will have the same opportunity. His match is now and is against another Battle Royal participant. Great Khali versus Danny Sandow. And this match was uh, all chopped, pinball, over with. Great Khali wins. And we see the door of the limousine finally open out of the back before it goes to commercial. But we don't see anybody in, out. We're coming out. Back from the commercial, Justin Roberts introducing the returning former WWE champion. Out comes. Wait for it. Wait for it. The Miz. He takes the mic and says he's back. Asking the fans if, if he's been missed. The reaction is mixed. He says he's the multi-talented superstar that's been teased. He's been, Holly, he's been in Hollywood shooting the Marine Corps and was tempted to, to stay in Hollywood. He says producers and agents were calling him to with lots of offers. He says that they told him he was better than WWE and could be Hollywood's biggest star. He says he's back because of the fans, which got a, a, a little bit of pop, bit of pop because the WWE Universe doesn't see him as an A-list talent. He says fans see him as a fluke and take him for granted. Uh, and he says that they're all wrong. He goes on bragging. He says he won't leave WWE until he's once again main eventing WrestleMania and gets the respect he deserves. He's not leaving until fans are on their knees begging him not to go. The power goes off and out comes Chris Jericho. Well, he's hot. Well, yeah. Light bright jacket and all. Nice goes out. Light bright jacket. Doesn't speak until after he lays out. As you can see, the Miz. Music, music stops and a big champ for Jericho breaks out. And Miz asks if Jericho has something to say. And this is the last return because he did the same thing. Come out and said nothing. Miz, the Miz says he's important. He's an actor. He's a box office doll. He's up just as he's. Uh. Jericho laid it out with a code breaker. Pay a champ for Jericho again. And lights go out again. Jericho takes the mic and says, that felt, well, and just after he mentioned this, wow, that felt good. That felt damn good. He's been waiting a long time to see that say these words. Well, it's just as it, now just as he says that lights go out. White family graphic appears. Let's come back on. We're already in the ring surrounding him. Bray attacks first and he beat him down. Nails the sister Abigail and wipes clothes over him. Now to end that segment. And, the, and fans are booing. Back from a commercial break and replay of what we just saw happening to Jericho. Fandango versus Dolph Ziggler was up next. <clears throat> Fandango and Layla dance her way out. Dolph Ziggler was out next to a big pop. Ziggler shot, struck first with a drop kick. Cole reveals that on the WWE app, Summer Rae extended a truth to Layla as she accepted it back and forth in the ring. Fandango slammed Ziggler face first. Cover for a two count. Fandango kiss, kisses Layla. And it cost him as Ziggler makes a comeback. Fans chanted for Ziggler as he mounted Fandango with the right hand in the corner. Ziggler nailed the back, uh, neck breaker and dropped with a big elbow. Summer Rae comes in out of nowhere and flirts with Ziggler. She grabs him, kisses him as fans cheer, and Fandango looks on, looks on upset. Ziggler grabs Summer and kisses him now. Uh, kisses. Ziggler grabs Summer and kisses her. And Fandango and Summer look. Look, what's going on as he leaves? He's walking up the ramp. Ziggler, Ziggler nails a zigzag on Fandango and pins him. One, two, three. After the match, Ziggler looks back at Summer and uh, looks like there's something brewing there. Look at this. I've done all that. Uh, still to come, Cena and Reigns versus Orton and Kane. And even uh, Summer was even doing some come back. And like the kiss. Well, back from the break, uh, from the commercial, we get a look back at Vicky Guerrero's exit from last week. You know, the mud pudding event. Uh, Stardust and Goldust was up next against Ryback Cole. We go to the ring, Ryback was at, uh, out with Curtis Axel. Stardust and Goldust were out next for the Money Bank rematch. Ryback and Axel strike first, sending Stardust off the apron. They go to work on Goldust. And he goes back and forth with Axel. Ryback comes in and hits Goldust from behind. Taking control with stomps. Fans chant Gold for Goldberg. Ryback now nails a suplex for a two. Ryback with a headlock, keeping Goldust all down on the mat. Ryback gets the clothesline and catches the crossbody before tossing Goldust across the ring. 
Wide back ready for the meet hook clothesline as a fan shot a Phoebe Vortet starts. Uh, right back runs into a big spine buster. Axel and Stardust tag in. Stardust unloads on Axel. Axel misses a big splash in the corner. Stardust with a big shot off the top rope. Ryback runs into Goldust, taking him out. Stardust with a springboard clothesline on Ryback. Axel grabs Stardust for his finisher, but it's not. Stardust slams Axel on his face for the win. Still to come, Cena and Reigns runs to Orton Kane. And we see Paige walking to the ring. Got the commercial, back from the break. Now comes Steven Champion Paige to the ring. She's making a phone low. Paige takes the mic and says she's a woman of few words. She says she usually lets her accent speak for her. She knows some people don't think she deserves to be a champion and that she should probably go back to down to NXT. But she feels that she deserves to be here after the past three months. Paige says that she's proven that she's here to stay. She's interrupted by AJ Lee's return. And she has a promo as well. AJ sk skips to the ring. Do a big pop. AJ takes the mic and sit and says the fans. As the fans chanting for CM Punk, AJ says Paige is right. She says it's not easy for her to, st to say, but Paige is right. She did know what no woman could do in a year. Proved AJ wrong. AJ goes on, but Paige doesn't buy it. She asks how stupid AJ thinks she is. Paige says that she's not, you know, not make the same mistake as AJ did. Another CM Punk chat broke out and it, and it splustered Paige. She says she doesn't think anyone wants to see her defend tonight. And they start a yes chat. AJ Lee asks the crowd again and they cheer. Yes, and we've got a match. Bell rings, AJ attacks. Paige fought her off momentarily with a, a nail kick. Paige uh, uh, got a few hits, but not more hit for that. Uh, <laughs> right. AJ fell back out of the corner, but Paige down the floor. So I'm momentarily got a Paige got a two count. AJ, uh, AJ ends up getting the win with a roll up. I don't know where with the crowd going nuts. Come back to the commercial. And Triple H is watching this one from ringside. The main event: Roman Reigns and John Cena versus Kane and Randy Orton. Kane and Orton were out first, followed by WWE Champion John Cena and Roman Reigns last. Orton Cena Cena start things off. And we get dueling chance from the crowd. Reigns end up, ends up tagging in and facing off with Orton. Orton doesn't want any of it and tags in Kane. Kane and Reigns train shot in the middle of the ring. Reigns sends Kane to the floor and he regroups with Orton. And Triple H says we got a commercial. <clears throat> and we come back with Orton and Kane taking turns on Reigns. Reigns finally fights back and takes out Orton. He drops Kane to the floor with a big shot into the barrier but turns around into a close eye for Orton. Orton rolls. Reigns back at the ring and, and tags in Kane for some double teaming. Cena reaches for a tag and says all they need is a chance. Kane with another pin attempt on Reigns as Triple H looks on. Reigns finally nails a big boot to Kane's face. Kane grabs him for a choke slam, but Reigns powers out. Kane comes right back uh, with the right hand. Reigns nails a small Samoa drop. Cena tags in and unloads at Orton with his usual moves. Cena drops a follow up the shovel. Goes for out to the judgment, but it's blocked. Kane takes back in, but Cena slams him. He hits the five knuckle shuffle on Kane next. Orton comes in and nails Cena with an RKO. Reigns throws Orton out of the ring and hits the Superman punch on Kane. Reigns fights Orton up the ramp now. Reigns and Orton brawl to the back as Kane throws Cena into the, into the still steps. Kane runs the steps into Cena's head for the disqualification. Winner, winner by disqualification, Cena and Roman Reigns. After the match, Triple H tells Kane to finish Cena. Kane takes him back in the ring and calls for a tooth on a pile driver. Kane nails it in the middle of the ring as Triple H looks on and smiles. Fans chant one more time that Cena is laid out. A referee calls for the doctor to come in and check on Cena. Triple H comes in the ring and shakes Cena's arm. Does the one block type thing. Triple H motions his hand. Out comes Seth Wallace to ca cash in. Wallace hits Hits the ring with a referee and wants to cash in, but the referee says Cena is out. Triple H forces the referee to go to the timekeeper and start the match. While they're arguing, Dean Ambrose runs in and attacks Rollins. Ambrose fights him to the floor and throws on him into the crowd. Ambrose chases Rollins through the crowd, and he never officially cashed in. 
Triple H calls for the referee, an idiot. Kane grabs the steel chair, comes back in the ring. Reigns runs back and out and Chris Kane to his pop. Triple H and Reigns have a stare down. And fans chat, yes, yes, yes. They're expecting a fight right there. There's a look and nothing is going to happen. And uh, Triple H points at Reigns and continues to stare him down as a huge fist is off the tent. Starts up. Triple H finally drops off the apron and as the crowd boos and Reigns music hits. Triple H circles the ring and continues staring at Reigns before Kane comes back as well goes off the air. And that's going to end my results for Raw and Superstars. I have a type of match, but didn't uh, happen. Well, they happened, but no results. Thanks again. See you when we'll be uh, in Freeport Time, same Freeport Channel. Don't forget. If you don't know, just call me, bro.